Good morning, second graders. Happy Easter. This morning, we're going to read a story, one of my favorite stories called Nacho and Lolita. We were going to read this earlier in the year, but we weren't able to. And so now I have the chance to share it with you, and I'm so excited. So what I'm going to do is use my document camera to show you the pictures, and then I read the words. And while I'm reading, I want you to look carefully at the pictures. There's lots about the story that you will see from the pictures. So here we go. Turn to my document camera. And it's going to work this time. Yay! Here it is. Let me zoom out. This is Nacho and Lolita by Pam Munoz Ryan, just like Mrs. Munoz. And it's illustrated by Claudia Ruida. Now, if you hear me say any of the Spanish words wrong, well, you'll just have to tell me later. Help me out there. There we go. And this is to Jorge, her husband, for holding my hand. Once, when the two Californians ran Alta y Baja, high and low, along the Sea of the Pacific, a mysterious bird landed on the branch of a mesquite tree in the valley of San Juan. His name was Nacho, and he was a pitacoche. Rare and majestic, he heralded the sunset with whistling songs and carried the colors of the world in his feathers. From his perch on the edge of the churchyard, Nacho could see the panorama. Acres of dirt <clears throat> rolled into thirsty riverbeds that held only a trickle of water. Nothing grew in the fields. Even the leaves of the mesquite tree matched the adobe of the mission San Juan Capistrano. So this is the mission. And there's the leaves and they're the same color. What a dismal place. Nacho thought. Everything seemed to blend into the same brown landscape. So everything is the same color. And here's Nacho. Except for Nacho. With a little too much pride, he spread his feathers preening and fluffing as he waited for the day to fade. At the moment the sun closed its eye, Nacho trumpeted the passing of the light with song, his trill like a mysterious wind. Oh, we are! Oh, we are! A crowd gathered to admire his evening ritual. He is so beautiful and his call is so haunting. He must be a spirit from the past, someone whispered, or a prophet of the future, said another. Nacho knew the truth. He was the only Pitacoche for thousands of miles and hundreds of years. His brilliance sometimes brought him attention, but what good was it when he had no other bird with whom to share his joy? The busy churchyard was a pleasant play, change from Nacho's lonesome travels. He watched people prepare for the March Feast of St. Joseph. He listened to them talk about the return of Las Golondrinas, the swallows. And the more he heard, the more curious he became. It's a miracle, said one man. Every year, the tiny birds cross the great waters to this very place, arriving on the feast day. Then, when the days grow shorter, they leave again for another world, always together. Una familia fantastica. How romantic, thought Nacho. The swallows were everything he was not. They were small and strong. He was big and bound to the land, unable to fly long distances without resting. They were a fantastic family flying together over the ocean. He didn't belong to anyone. Intrigued by the people's preparations and caught up in their enthusiasm, 
not to wonder what he could do to help. I have nothing to offer, he thought, except my songs. On the feast day, Nacho woke to the clanging of the bells. People ran into the churchyard and pointed skyward. Las Colindrinas, they cried. A scout swallow circled above, then another, followed by a flight of swallows trailing in the sky. All morning they came, swooping down toward the mission and landing in the eaves. One small swallow chose the belfry of the chapel to make her nest. All day she flew back and forth to the riverbed, gathering bits of mud and twigs. Each time she passed Nacho, she peeked at him. Did she notice my glorious feathers, he wondered? My regal stature? I am colorful and noble. Or was it something else? Could she see my pitiful and lonely spirit? As the sw small swallow made her last trip of the day, the sun said good night and Nacho began un arrullo, a lullaby. Every swallow leaned forward to hear the magnificent serenade. The small one stopped on the ox cart and listened. When Nacho finished his song, he plucked one of his feathers and flew to the ox cart. As was his destiny, once a colorful feather was spent, a gray feather grew back in its place. But Nacho didn't mind. When the swallow took it in her beak, by the mystery of the ages, it became a blue hibiscus. What is your name, Nacho asked. Lolita, she said, her cheeks blushing the faintest pink. Lolita, Lolita, he repeated, and his voice filled with notes he had never dreamed of singing. Hmm. Days passed and Nacho cheerfully busied himself among the swallows. He carried bits of dry grass and dollops of mud to their nests, especially Lolita's. After the speckled eggs appeared, he used his wide wings to protect them, especially Lolita's. When the chicks were born, he searched for beetles, flies, and spiders and delivered them to each home, especially Lolita's. Thank you, Nacho, she said. You are splendid, you are magnificent. Nacho's bright feathers fluffed and his heart felt as cozy as the warming breezes. Every evening his lullaby echoed through the mission. Lolita, Ruio. By summertime, Lolita and her chicks were always by Nacho's side. Nacho was so full of affection and purpose that he could not remember a time before he came to the mission. Together, he and Lolita watched the chicks fledge and fly. As the days grew longer, they stayed in the fields until sunset, foraging for worms and bugs. Then, one day, a September gust brought a message with the wind and a hint of uneasiness settled among the swallows. I'm afraid we must leave soon, Lolita reminded him. And now there is talk that we will never come back here again. The water is drying up. We need mud to make our nests. We need flowers and trees to attract insects, so there will be enough food. Without the river to guide us, we will easily miss this spot next year. Nacho panicked. He'd forgotten that Lolita would have to leave. Now she might never return. Stay with me, he pleaded. It's too cold here in the winter. I must migrate or I will die. You come with me, she begged. You would love it in the South Americas. Rivers overflow the banks, flowers decorate the fields. Lolita looked toward the ocean as if she couldn't wait to cross it. 
and the sunsets are the color of papayas. Nacho hung his head. I can't fly that far, he said sadly. I am too big. I've asked the others, said Lolita. There is one idea that might work if you are willing. Lolita led Nacho to a quiet cove. Carry this branch in your talons, she said. Fly as long as you can. When you grow tired, drop the branch into the water and rest on it. Then wait for your strength to return so you can fly again. Nacho did as Lolita instructed and bobbed safely on the calm water. He practiced every day until the October morning when the scout swallows left and the others prepared to follow. Could he really go with them? Just the chance made him feel as if he could fly forever. Ooh. At last, the time had come to leave the mission. Nacho and Lolita hurried to a cliff's edge facing the vast ocean. Nacho gripped the branch. The breeze lifted him and he followed Lolita over the rough open sea. But after a very short distance, Nacho was exhausted. He dropped the branch and landed on it just as he'd practiced. Lolita circled above, waiting for him. Before Nacho was ready to fly again, choppy wave, waves rocked him from his perch. He splashed and struggled and began to sink. Nacho, Nacho, cried Lolita. He slipped farther and farther beneath the swells. A thousand swallows turned back, flew down and lifted Nacho to safety. On the cliff top, gasping for air, he knew the truth. A big pita coche and a small swallow were not meant to be together. Go, he told Lolita. We will meet in our dreams. When she disappeared from his sight, his heart felt as barren as the land. That night, as the sun slid away, Nacho's song ached with sadness. Lolita, I love you. Winter came with heavy fog. Nacho sat sentry in the mesquite tree and remembered the happy times with La Familia Fantastica. He thought about the first time he saw Lolita and how he had given her one of his feathers. He looked at the gray feather that had grown back in its place. I would give all my colorful feathers if the swallows and my Lolita would come back, he thought. Wasn't there some way to guarantee their safe return? Nacho flew to the belfry every day. The blue hibiscus had taken root among the mud nests. And even though the flowers were gone, the strong vine wove its way through the tower, exactly as Lolita had done to his heart. When spring poked its head into February, the vine held buds that promised returning blossoms. All that from one feather. Suddenly, Nacho knew what he must do. In March, when the people began their preparations for the Feast of St. Joseph, Nacho began to prepare too. He flew to the fields, clucked his orange and yellow feathers, and as fast as he planted them, the acres bloomed with poppies and mustard. He left a trail of blue feathers in the riverbed and it overflowed, filling the small creeks and marshes. He pushed green feathers into the soil until palms danced in the breeze and orange trees flourished. He tucked feathers over arches and balconies and draperies of bougainvillea appeared. As Nacho worked, he wondered if the swallows would find their way. Determined, he planted feathers in every patch of earth in the churchyard until a splendor burst forth. Let's 
Nacho. Spreading his feathers all over and look at him. He's so different now. Nacho had used every feather except one. When the hallowed bells rang as if they'd never rung before, Nacho searched the sky for Lolita. A million thoughts raced through his mind. What if she doesn't recognize me? What if she doesn't like me now that I'm as drab as a mud hen? Nacho watched the scout swallows dive around the mission in a frenzy of joy and excitement. One after another they came, followed by a flurry of swallows. He turned his head toward the heavens and waited. Ah. Look at how beautiful. When at last Lolita found Nacho in the mesquite tree, it was as if they'd been together for thousands of miles and hundreds of years. I no longer have my beautiful colors, he said. To me, you will always be splendid, she said. Together they flew toward the river to gather mud and twigs to make a nest. Before the day faded, Nacho plucked the last bright feather from his wing and tossed it toward the westward clouds. Then, at the moment the sun closed its eye, Nacho heralded the passing of the day with a concert. Against a papaya sky. That's the end. Now, let me turn my video around. Now, what did you think of that story? It is one of my favorites. And I have a question for you that is your assignment for tomorrow. So you need to answer this question using either a video or you can write it down on paper. So my question is, why is Nacho and Lolita a love story? Now, I don't want you to think of love like mom and dad kissy love. How is it a love story in a different way? How is it a love story like the love story of Jesus and the love story of the saints and the love story of things your parents do for you. So I am really excited to hear what you think. And I hope that you enjoyed Nacho and Lolita as much as I did. See you guys later. Bye-bye.